morning, brothers and sisters. Again, we thank God for this another privilege to be able to come to church one more time. We thank God for all of his many blessings that he have already bestowed upon us. We thank God for our executive pastor, Pastor Frederick Walker. Thank God for our minister of music, Brother Charles Taylor, and also our drummer, Deacon uh, Tim Kincaid, Timothy Amen. Kincaid. Amen. Certainly we thank God for those that is in the uh, audio video booth. At this time we're going to get ready to welcome into the service. We do say thank God for our members. We were a member of New Bethlehem Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you all for being so faithful through all of this uh, uh, this trying time that we are uh, faced. We thank God for our deacons, and certainly we thank God for all of those that uh, work on our ministry as health ministry. We be here to check our temperature and, and ask questions about this COVID-19. Amen. We certainly thank God for them. And we like to say to all of our members and to all of that are viewing this uh, uh, telecast uh, by Facebook, please be, uh, be safe. Amen. Take the precaution that you need to take that you can get through on this, be here on the other side of this COVID-19. But if we don't do what we need to do, we might not be here on the other side. So please, ma'am, and please, sir, let's do what we need to do to be here on the other side of this uh, COVID-19. At this time, we're going to say that, let me also say uh, we thank God that we was able to uh, be out here this morning. Amen. 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 I don't get here every Sunday morning, but the last few Sundays, God had blessed us to be able to be here. Certainly, we ask for your prayers. Pray for all of our members, those that are sick, those that are going through, those that are bereaved, that have lost loved ones uh, this, this uh, year. Please keep them in your Prayer. Amen. At this time, we're going to get ready for prayer. We're going to ask, if you will, to bow your head in a word of prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come now with bow our heads and humble hearts. Yes, Lord. Lord, we come with a heart of thanksgiving, Thank thanking you for the many blessings that you have already bestowed upon us. Father, we thank you that you kept watch over us last night. Yes. You didn't let no hurt, harm, or danger come upon us. Yes. Father, we don't know how many times last night that death tempted to get over in the bed with us. Yes. But uh, you said no. And for that, we say thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for health, life, and strength. Now, Lord, we ask our blessing upon this servant, Father. Please. We pray that you will bless uh, Pastor Frederick Walker yes. as he come and declare your word this morning. And then, Lord, we pray that you will bless every preacher that standing behind the sacred desk today. Yes. Heavenly Father, whether they be present or whether they're doing it by Facebook or whatever, Father. Yes. But, Lord, we just pray that you will use them today in a mighty way that men, women, girls, and boys will fall out with the ways of the world yes. and come over on your side. Lord, we pray thy blessing upon those that have lost loved ones, especially to this uh, COVID-19, Father. Yes. Lord, we pray that you will bless them, the families that have lost loved ones. Strengthen them, Father, in this hour. Please. And then, Lord, we pray for all of those that are sick, all of those that are wrestling with it, or uh, either any uh, uh, other type of, of sickness, yes. we pray that you would touch them with your healing hand. Heavenly Father, we know that you're able. You, you, you're doing it one time, you can do it again. Yes. 
Father, we know that you got all power in your hand. You said in your word that we have not because we ask not. Yeah. And then, Lord, we come praying for this nation. We pray for our president. Yeah. Lord, we pray for our governor. We pray for our mayor of the many different cities. And, 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 and we pray for the governor of all of the state and the United States. Yes, yeah. Father, we pray that you would give them the wisdom how to maneuver the new of their way uh, uh, through this uh, 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 COVID-19, Father. Oh, Lord, they need you. They, 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 they can't get along without you. Pray that you would touch our president, Father, that he would do the right thing, Father, that would help us to get to the other side. Now, Lord, uh, now, Lord, when, when this life down here is over, yeah. when the victory of all didn't been heard, yeah. when your poor weak hand made serve, then went the last mile of the way. Yeah. Now, Lord, yeah. we pray that you will come close to us, yeah. that we'll be able to lay our head on your breast, yeah. breathe our life out of between now. Yeah. Now, Lord, yeah. now, Lord, yeah. now, Lord, yeah. We need you down here. Yeah. Can't get along without you. Walk with us uh, and talk with us. Uh, hold our hand uh, while we are traveling uh, in this under friendly world. Uh, when it's all over, when it's all over, call us. We'll be able to answer. Take us home where well, we'll be able to rest forevermore. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. We give all praises to the Almighty God. We bless God for this opportunity to be able to come to church one more time. It's evidence that God has once again looked beyond our faults, seen our need. I don't know about you, but I'm mighty, mighty glad about it. Amen. We Bless God for our the presence of our pastor on this morning. Amen. We're just so grateful to God to have our senior pastor, Pastor J.P. Walker, uh, with us this morning. Amen. I must confess that uh, I took my son to the barber the other day, and he uh, notified me, let me know that. He said, well, I was watching you guys live on Facebook on Sunday, and I saw the pastor, uh, Pastor J.P. Walker, standing up praying, and he said, my wife and I, we were uh, gathering ourselves and we was bracing ourselves getting ready to hear a word from Reverend J.P. Walker he said but uh, Reverend Walker set us up that morning and because you came up amen amen uh, so he he said uh, in so many words that they were willing to put up with me but I think they really wanted to hear Pastor J.P. Walker amen but we just thank God for uh, for our pastor being with us we give honor to our uh, first lady to so Florida Walker uh, to Lady Katina Walker, uh, my lovely wife, we just thank and bless God for her. As uh, the pastor already stated, we thank God for our uh, minister of music and the music department, uh, the media department, our uh, uh, deacons that's been so faithful, along with other brothers that's been collecting the offering on Sunday morning from the hours of 10 to 11. Amen. One other thing we just want to uh, uh, put a little more emphasis on, uh, and that is make sure that you uh, uh, register with uh, the census, that you do the census, amen, so that our, uh, our moderator encouraged us to encourage our members amen. to make sure that you complete the census and that you register to vote, amen, amen, and if you're able to vote as early as possible, amen, it's bigger than just the, the presidency because uh, who we choose in November uh, has a, a uh, the right to uh, 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 put people on the Supreme Court. Uh, and I was just reading an article this morning, Pastor, that said that the life expectancy of a Supreme Court judge is anywhere from 25 to 35 years. Oh, so what that says is whoever the next president is, that's who's going to choose the next couple of Supreme Court judges that's going to make decisions for you, your children, and your grandchildren. Amen. So let us be mindful to register to vote and let us vote. Amen. Amen. Let us not complain, but let us 
uh, exercise uh, our uh, uh, right to vote. Amen. Amen. Uh, with that being said, there is a word uh, from the Lord on this morning. It is found in uh, the book of Psalms. Uh, Psalms, uh, uh, the 13th number of Psalms. Amen. 13th number of Psalms. We ask that you would pray with us and pray for us, but we definitely need your, your prayers. Uh, Psalms uh, 13, beginning reading at verse 1. It's to the chief musician, a psalm of David. It says, How long thou forget me, O Lord, forever? How long will thou hide thy face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and hear me, O Lord, my God. Light my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed against him, and those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But I have trust in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I will sing unto the Lord, because he hath dealt bountifully with me. Thus in reading the word of God, may God add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and most of all the doers of his holy and divine word. I'd like to use for a thought this morning, just for a little while, a fellow in his feelings. All right. A fellow in his feelings. Now, this phrase, when someone uttered this phrase that uh, you're just in your feelings, mm -hmm. this is uh, somewhat of a, a negative phrase. Yeah. This is a phrase that is critical of the one that's going through. It seems to suggest that you're you're being oversensitive, uh -huh. that you're being a drama queen, or you're uh, you're being a a whiner, or some would even say a crybaby. Yeah. But uh, I don't want to look at it in a negative light this morning, because I don't think the problem really lies with the person that's going through. But a lot of time, the problem lies with the one that's being insensitive to what that person is going through. Yeah. Because if truth be told this morning, now if truth be really told this morning, all of us have dealt with some situations Man. that has put us in our feelings. Yeah. That has put us almost level to the ground, that has broken our heart, that has caused tears to stream down our face to cause us to have a lump in our throat, a queasiness in our stomach. All of us at some point in time or another yeah. have encountered some situations, some problems, some pain, some perils, some plights, oh, and even a pandemic uh -huh. that has put us in a place where we were simply in our feelings. Yes, now, don't let this title throw you off. I know uh, it has the, the masculine term fellow. But the only reason that term is there, uh, fellow, because uh, one of the main characters in the text is David, which is a male character. Amen. But I want you to know that uh, it's not limited to the male gender. Amen. Yeah, anybody can be a fellow in their feelings this morning. That's and I don't know who I'm talking to, Pastor, but I just do believe that somebody's screaming this morning and they're, they're in their feelings, but they're not of the male gender. Amen. Yeah, you can be a fellow in your feelings even as a mother. Yeah. That has done all you know what to do and how to do for that child, and that child is still disrespectful. Yeah. You still don't know where that child lives this morning. That mother is in her feelings this morning. Uh -huh. Could be that woman that's dealing with uh, uh, physical abuse, uh, sexual abuse, emotional abuse. She's in her yeah. feelings this yeah. morning. Yeah. Could be that woman that having a problem of being a good wife because she's still dealing with childhood issues from molestation. She's in her feelings this morning. So you don't have to be of the male gender to be a fellow in your feelings. Yes. And then by chance, we may have some fellows, some males that's in your feelings this morning. Yes. You might be dealing with a situation, a, a, a doctor report. Uh -huh. you may be dealing with a, a trouble in your marriage. It may be pain in your body. But whatever it is, any of us and all of us at some point in time or another yes, sir. has been a fellow in our feelings. Yes, sir. So I want you to know that uh, we, we see you and we feel you this morning. All right. 
that all of us at some time or another can be in our feelings. And what I get, what I get out of this, uh, uh, Brother Taylor, is that uh, we're not exempt from being in our feelings. We're not exempt from encountering some heartaches, some heartbreaks, and some pain pearls yes, in our lives just because we know Jesus. Amen. No, just because we know Jesus doesn't exempt us. David, David here is known as a man after God's own heart. Uh -huh. But yet and still, we see in the text this morning that David was in his feelings. Yes, Let us look at David because I just do believe, I do believe that there are some helpful holy hints that's hidden in the hollow of this text that will help us to get through being in our feelings. Because uh -huh. what I notice in the text, David starts off in his feelings. Yes, but he ends in the text a man feeling good. Yeah, yeah. I see, first of all, I notice, I notice uh, David, uh, I see his sorrow. All right. I see his sorrow because he he questioned God. He says to God, he says, how long will thou forget me? Oh God, oh Lord, uh, forever? How long will thou hide thy face from me? Yeah. David is in his feelings, Brother Kincaid. He's in his feelings on us this morning. David is going through something. Some writer said that he wrote this when he was on the run, running from Saul. Uh -huh. Some say it was perhaps when he was running from his son Absalom. I, I don't know exactly when, but uh, uh, David wrote this song because he was really in his feeling at this time. Yeah. David is in his sorrow. I see his sorrow. I see his pain, his problem. And I see his cry and his complaining. David says, how long? Now, now here's what gets me, Pastor, and I'll and I hurry on, but here's what gets me. David, he know God. Yes, sir. He, he has a relationship with God. He really knows God. But David asks the question, how long? Hello. Without forgetting me, oh Lord, forever. Now, David realizes that he's talking to an omniscient God. Yes, sir. One that knows everything. Now, if there's a God that knows everything, then that tells me that he can't forget anything. Amen. But David asked the question, how long? Well, here's the deal. When you're in your feelings, it causes you to say some irrational things. Yes. Sir. When you're in your feelings, uh, it will cause you to vent out your frustration, even if it's venting it out towards God. David is bending. He's at the throne of grace. He's not praying at this moment, but he's bending. He's, he's letting out some of his anger. He's letting out his frustration on God. He asks God, look, you promised me that I was going to be king of Israel. All right. You the one made the covenant, but I'm on the run for my life. So it seems as if you've forgotten about me. David say, how long would I hide thy face? Not only have you forgotten about me, God, but uh, to hide your face simply suggests that you turn your back uh -huh. to what I'm dealing with. And then David said, if that is not enough, he said, how long shall I take counsel in my soul? In other words, David said, I got to lay on my own psychiatrist's couch. Yeah. And I got to counsel my, my own self. So uh, how long will I have to counsel my, my soul? Having sorrow in my heart daily, day in and day out. On Sunday, sorrow. On Monday, yeah, sorrow. Yeah. On Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, sorrow. Wow. Every day I'm having sorrow in my heart. What's on the menu for Friday? Sorrow. What's on the menu for Saturday? Sorrow. So how long shall I have sorrow in my heart daily? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Yeah. Going through it look like my enemies are prospering while I'm going through. Uh -huh. Yes, but uh, I want you to know that David's frustration, David bending at the throne of grace, it drove him to his knees. Yes, sir. Look, if you're going to vent to God, you not only need to tell him, vent out your frustration, but it ought to push you, it ought to drive you to your knees. Uh -huh. Well, you begin to stop talking at God and start talking to God. Uh -huh. You do know that there's a difference, don't you, from talking at God and talking to God. At God, you're just uh, complaining, you're crying, you're, you're telling him about your trouble, but when you begin to talk to him, All right. you begin to say like the songwriter that says, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. Uh -huh. No other help I know. You begin to call on him for his help. Yes, yes it moved from sorrow 
to supplication. Uh -huh. He moves from his problem, his pain, to prayer. He moves from his crying and complaining to calling on the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. Yes, all of us ought to, uh, our problems ought to drive us to the Lord. Y'all not drive us away from the Lord, regardless of how bad the marriage has gotten. It ought not drive you away, but it ought to drive you to the Lord. Uh -huh. No matter how uh, that child is acting, it ought not drive you away, but it ought to drive you to your knees. Uh -huh. He says, uh, in his feelings, he moved from just bending to the Lord to uh, praying to the Lord. That's it. He says to the Lord, consider and hear me. Some translation put it, it says, look on me. In other words, David said, Lord, uh, if you got your back turned, turn around and look at me. If you look at me, I know that your eyes is connected to your heart. There's no way that you can look at me going through what I'm going through and not move on my behalf. David said, consider and hear me. Or can look at me and answer me, Lord. Mm. Here's what I like, Brother King Cain. He said, oh, Lord, my God. Now, uh, in the Hebrew, uh, it's better translated uh, Jehovah, my Elohim. Yeah. So in essence, what he's saying, Jehovah is the God of promise. Elohim is the God of power. So what are you actually saying when you say uh, Jehovah, my Elohim? Well, David will tell you this morning, what I'm actually saying is, I'm calling on the God that made a promise that has the power to keep the promise. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, it's in there, that's in there. Uh, he, he, not only did he make the promise, but uh, Elohim say he's the God that has the power to keep the promise. Uh -huh. Make the promise come to be. Yes, uh, his situation hadn't changed, but David is changing. Although your situation may not change, but you can rejoice this morning because God doesn't change. Yeah, amen. And because he doesn't change, he can change us. Yep. Yes, I see David uh, say to the Lord, he said, consider and hear me, uh, Jehovah, my Elohim. Then he goes on and said, light my eyes. Mm. Listen at his prayer. Listen at his supplication. Light my eyes, or in other words, increase or strengthen my faith. Yes, sir. Oh, you don't have to. I remember hearing a uh, uh, young lady, uh, Miss Inez Andrews, sing a song, Lord, uh, you don't have to move my mountain. But she said, give me the strength to, to go around. Yeah, give me the strength to climb and uh, yeah, yeah. She said, give me the strength. Yes, and David is saying here, yeah, Lord, if you don't move my situation, what I need you to do is increase my faith uh -huh. so I'm able to handle what I'm dealing with. He said, now, if you don't increase my faith, he said, unless I sleep the sleep of death. Yeah. In other words, David was saying, Lord, if, I, if you don't walk with me, All right. I can't make this journey alone. Yeah. If you don't hold my hand, oh, no. Lord, I can't stand the storm. Oh. David says to God, he says, look, uh, increase my faith. Yeah. If you don't, Lord, what, this thing I'm dealing with, this anxiety, it's going to take me out. Yeah. This depression that I'm dealing with, it's going to take me out. Oh. In this feeling, I want you to know that if you don't do the right things in your feelings, All right. it can very well take you out. But the right thing here, you know, David said that the, the prescription for the day is take it to the Lord in Amen. prayer. That's it. Yes, uh, everything. It does not matter. We can take everything to the Lord Amen. in prayer. And uh, somebody ought to shout this morning because not only can you take it to him in prayer, but somebody said you can leave it right there. Yeah. Yes, he goes on saying this prayer, unless my enemies say, oh. my enemies say I have prevailed against him. Though that trouble me, rejoice when I am moved. Here's what I understand, Brother Taylor, that you don't have to do anything to anybody, but you got some haters out there that just want to see you fall. Uh -huh. Yeah, they're, they're looking, they're waiting on you to fall. Yes, uh, that same lady, Sister uh, Inez Andrew said in that song, uh, don't move my mouth, and she said, Lord, I don't bother nobody. She said, I try to treat everybody the same. She said, every time I turn my back, regardless of how much good she's done, she uh -huh. said, but every time I turn my back, they scandalize my, my name. So it doesn't matter how good you are to people, some people still want to see you fall. Uh -huh. 
You got some people, I will drop this one in for free. You don't have to pay me for this one, but you got some people that don't like you. Yeah. And if you ask them, why don't you like them? What is it that you don't like about them? Uh, then the answer would be, I don't know, I just don't. Nah. I just don't like them. Mm. Yeah, so does not matter how good you are to people, you still got some folks that don't like you. Yes, sir. But David goes on to say, lest my enemies say I have prevailed against him. Mm. Those that trouble me rejoice when I am moved. Well, I've held you long enough, but uh, I see that he had sorrow. Yeah. His sorrow drove him to supplication. Uh -huh. And his supplication moved him to sing. Yeah. yeah, he started off with sorrow, but he ended with a song. Uh -huh. Yeah, he started off with pain and problems, yeah. but he ends with a, a praise. Oh, he starts off with crying and complaining, but he ends with a celebration. Yes, sir. And here's the reason why, because uh, prayer has a way of bringing joy and filling our hearts with joy. Uh-huh. Yeah. The songwriter was right the other day when he said, just a little talk with Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. We'll make everything all right. Uh-huh. David goes on to say, but I have trusted in thy mercy. Yes, sir. He didn't say I trusted in my bank account. He didn't say I trusted in my own strength. He didn't say I trusted in my knowledge. But he said, I trusted in thy mercy. Yes, and my heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. You do know that the Lord is a savior, don't you? What will he, he save you from? Well, David will tell you that uh, he'll save you from your sins. Yeah. He'll save you from your soul. Oh. He'll save you from your son. Uh -huh. He'll save you even from yourself. Yes, sir. Yeah, David say, uh, my heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. Uh -huh. I'm going to wealth, but the lands both say, I will sing unto the Lord because he have dealt bountifully with me. Yes, yeah. In other words, you can look at this one uh, two ways. Uh -huh. You can look at it literally, and he was saying, uh, the Lord, what he's already done for me in the uh -huh. past, uh -huh. he has dealt bountifully with, with me. me. But then you can look at it through the eyes of faith. Uh, yeah. He's speaking in future tense, uh, but he's speaking with a past tense of uh, the wording. Because in other words, he's saying, although I'm still in my situation, uh -huh. I'm going to give him joy, joy praise, uh, as if he's already delivered me. Yeah. Because he said, the Lord is just bound to that with me. He's all right. Uh, I'm so glad this morning uh, that the Lord, uh, he looked down one day uh, and saw mankind uh, in his feelings. Uh, and you know what he did? Uh, he began to feel for us uh, because we were in our feelings. Uh, we were in a world of sin. Uh, they couldn't do a thing about it. Uh, but you know what Jesus did? Uh, he felt so much for us uh, until he got on the nature train. Uh, rolling through border to generation. Uh, got on the Bethlehem of Judea. Yeah. Stayed around for 33 years. Uh, can I tell you what he was doing? Uh, he's alright. I know he's alright. Uh, he stayed around for 33 years uh, because he saw people uh, in their feelings. Uh, walk by a pool one day. Uh, saw a man at the pool of Bethesda. Uh, he was in his feelings, uh, but he changed his feelings. Uh, he saw a widow woman from Nain, uh, yeah. had a very only son, uh, but you know what he did. Uh, he had feelings for the woman. Uh, he changed her situation, uh, yeah. raised her son from dead, uh, and sent him back home with his mama. He saw Jairus one day. Uh, he was in his feelings uh, because his daughter was sick uh, at the point of death. Uh, as a matter of fact, she died. Yeah. Yeah. Thank be to God. He had feelings for Jairus. Uh, raised his daughter up. Uh, told him, give us something to eat. Uh, he's all right. He's all right. Yeah. He's so much. Uh, felt so much for you and I. Until one Friday uh, on a hill called Calvary. Uh, you know what he did, New Bethel. Uh, and Facebook friends. Uh, he went to a rugged cross uh, on a hill called Calvary. Uh, and you know what he did up uh, there. Yeah. He died, he died, he died, he died, he died, he died, but that's the hardest story, they laid him in a barn or two, he's 
staying right there all night Friday night, all day and all night Saturday. But how many know? Please, we, we're, we're begging you. 
Now, some will say that we're begging because we need your finances. I want you to know that God has blessed us yeah. here at New Bethel, but we're begging you because we want your soul saved. That's it. We want your soul secured this morning. Please, ma'am, please, sir, you have family members that you know that are out of fellowship. Talk to them. Explain to them the, uh, the road of salvation. Explain to them how to be saved. And then you can call us along with them. Right. And we'll definitely take you back in. God bless you. May God keep you. May God ever smile upon you.